Energy says this stiff device platform donates oximeters to the Sajidama families. Medical TV program All About Health celebrates its 20th anniversary. Welcome to Dye Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. In Taiwan, in order to care for Dama families, city assistive device platform donated 256 oximeters. Through Hualien City volunteers, oximeters were given to Dama families. It's not just a delivery of a device, but a delivery of love and care, especially during the pandemic. Volunteers and everyone is happy to see each other. <laughs> Though they haven't met for quite some time, volunteers and Dharma friends are happy to see each other. Volunteers demonstrate the know-how of oximeters to Dharma family members. This is the best. Now you can measure your blood pressure at home. You can keep track of your own condition. It's great. City Northern District Assisted Device Platform delivered 256 oximeters to Eastern District volunteers as each oximeter is ready to use. Though during the pandemic, volunteers couldn't bring care to Dharma families especially seniors over the age of 70 living in eastern Taiwan. These people need oximeters to self-monitor every day. Just like what Sister Zhuang said, your peripheral nerve is better than hers. This means you have exercised more. She wants to be more like you. Everyone's busy, therefore the oximeter is great. It can provide data of our body within six seconds. If we are healthy, then we can go to work. Everyone feels safe. As volunteers go door to door delivering oximeters, they also give helpful reminders to Dharma families. Our team uses this chance to invite each team leader to walk into a Dharma family's home, bring love to these people. After talking and sharing helpful tips, volunteers and Dharma families made promises to do more good deeds after the pandemic. To take care of disadvantaged students, City Foundation has bought 528 brand new laptops to be delivered to disadvantaged families. More than a dozen children from care recipient families who are studying in college or high school were invited to help install the software reciprocating Tsuji's love. After the briefing, everyone starts to install software on hundreds of laptops, which is their goal today. Adult volunteers guide the young volunteers, who are high school students or college students. All of them are the children of the Cixi care recipients. Cixi has helped me before, so I should give back, helping those in need. Student He studied in a nursing school after graduated from high school. He came from a single-parent family. Wanted to share some of his mother's financial burden, he went to school during the day and worked two part-time jobs after school. However, he was exhausted, leading to a car accident. Volunteers felt empathy for him. We then subsidize his living and accommodation expense so that he can concentrate on his study this year. With everyone's help, student He was admitted to the respiratory care department of Tangan University. He wants to be a respiratory therapist in the future. Just like what the master has said, we not only need to love him, but also instill Zhiji's spirit in his heart. Let them learn to give and form good affinity in the process of giving. All the children present were very happy to be invited to join this event. After installation, these 528 laptops will be donated to disadvantaged students in Miaoli, Taichung and Nanto districts. During the pandemic, medical workers and long-term care workers must acquire more knowledge on COVID prevention. On this day, the Ministry of Health and Welfare collaborated with the Foundation in a one-day course. The course aims to help medical workers and long-term care workers learn about COVID prevention at their workplace. In our current generation filled with change, we must adapt and improve ourselves. During the pandemic, the way to give care in nursing facilities has changed. Many nurses and caregivers have arrived to listen to professional doctors, learning more about COVID prevention. Only through classes can people acquire proper information, then treating the virus with proper method. Wang Chiu Li is a nurse with 18 years of work experience. She was originally an internal medicine nurse, but was transferred to home health care later on. 
In order to provide better care to seniors, she learned for care on her own and attended the one-day course. We want to elevate the love in each caregiver. This also includes the sense of mission and responsibility. This allows seniors to feel less pain and feel more at ease. Care with love can calm a senior's heart. After the course, it is expected that students may apply what they learn in real-life situations. Besides telling you what to do, the teachers want you to know the reasons why. They want students to know how they can arrange themselves in their institute's agenda and workflow. The course is a collaboration between Ministry of Health and Welfare and Siji Foundation's Long-Term Care Development Center. At the venue, only 50 seats are available due to COVID prevention measures, as lecturers hope to spread proper knowledge to the public. Song Jinghua is a deputy head nurse at Hualien City Medical Center. She has been in nursing for 12 years. With the COVID pandemic being severe, she worried that seniors in tribal villages do not know how to protect themselves. To solve this problem, she helped produce COVID-related health videos in traditional indigenous language. During the pandemic, the whole country was upgraded to a level 3 alert. Many restrictions and regulations were added to daily life. In Huarian, there was grandfather who didn't understand the shop registry system. I kept crying after reading it. Someone asked me why I kept crying because it wasn't a family member. Our target are these indigenous people and their tribal villages, and those who need the most help. It's because we feel that there are too many of them who don't understand, and we may lose this chance. They are not like the general public, which already knows a lot, or some indigenous people have no understanding. Zheng Yajun, nursing department supervisor at Hualien Ziji Medical Center. She grew up in an indigenous tribe. She thinks of the elders and other folks in the tribal village who may not understand these complicated epidemic prevention regulations. I'm from tribal village in Daren Township, Taidong country which is very remote. First of all, those within the tribe know there's not very good medical equipment in the tribe, and there is relative scarce medical treatment. In fact, prevention is more important for us. So Zhen Yajun called on indigenous nursing colleagues to use their own ethnic language to shoot and produce ethnic language anti-pandemic and health education videos. In the Hualien area, there are mainly Ame, Turago, and some Bonans. These three ethnic programs are the main ones. Our hospital has a lot of our college here who are basically very good at expressing themselves in these ethnic languages. If we're looking at these words for the filming, then we shoot a video. We can show things like when you wear a mask, you should hold it here. We can point to the nose and show that the mask should be worn like this. I think it's very good. But you see, because this is not read often, like the word of chin is seldom used. For a long time, we were stuck here as we recorded this for at least three hours that day. We just can't stand it, as you can see now that how it's written means the chin. Song Jin Huan is the deputy head nurse of the pediatric ward at the Hualien Ziji Medical Center. She is the photographer and editor of this indigenous language health education video. I think she led us to do this. I think it's not just that she has gained a lot, but we have gained even more. To maintain social safety distance, it's better to talk about social distancing. The social distancing is a word we don't have in our language. The formation of this action must also be somewhat related to our own culture, so that the elderly can understand it. So who we talk about the social distance of 1.5 meters? For example, Taiwan people we dance with open arms. 
so we just say, open our hands when we dance. This is the so-called social distancing. It's a good way to let the elders know or let our tribal know what is a social distancing. After the pandemic in the Chongde tribe, we were really worried and scared. But we watched the video in our mother tongue version. This health education was very helpful to us. A video on health education makes it easier for the elders of the tribal village to understand pandemic prevention methods through the cordial exchange of information in their mother tongue. Occupational therapists help seniors in recalling memories of the past through different activities. They include dumping kitchen waste, washing dishes, and brushing teeth. Seniors at the center also share their experiences on the proper methods to wash clothes. Oh. Rubbing the shirt clean of stains. <laughs> These laundry supplies are here to remind seniors of their past. The main purpose is to use daily activities to let seniors recall past memories. Then they can familiarize and practice tasks. They can also share what they did with everyone. I feel like these items are precious items for them to link to the past. As seniors take washing very seriously, they also share helpful tips. I haven't hand washed clothes for a long time. Seniors nowadays are better off because they don't have to wash clothes. In the past, we had to bring clothes to the ditch and hand wash it by scrubbing it and wringing it out all by hand. These simple daily activities and simple actions allowed seniors to recall their past memories. Taichung City Hospital Superintendent Jian Shouxing has been hosting all about health for 20 years. For 20 years, he has upheld his initial aspiration to share health knowledge and safeguard people's health. As the popular TV program celebrates its 20th anniversary, it will also be broadcast on the internet. Superintendent Jian Shouxing has been saying this line for 20 years. Since he was young, Superintendent Jian has upheld his initial aspiration to safeguard people's health. We've witnessed his talents and his well-rounded knowledge in different fields. The Monkey King can change 72 times. However, our superintendent has changed 5,600 times in 20 years. Over 20 years, All About Health has been broadcasting 5,600 episodes, and every episode displays creativity and new thoughts. His creativities and thoughts in different fields are truly unique. As All About Health celebrates its 20th anniversary, the program has also been broadcast on the Internet. Superintendent Jian is no longer just a program host. He's also a knowledgeable YouTuber. As All About Health officially launched on YouTube channel. After scanning the QR code, the audience can watch the show at any time. Patients congratulate Superintendent Jian. He had been bad return for very long, until Superintendent provide a house code. With the superintendent's encouragement, Jiang Yongxu, who suffers from spinal cord injury, has become a foot mouth painter. Superintendent's program is very diverse in its content. Why can I host the program till now? I must have a beginning and a process. This process is a direction for change. This change means people can accept health knowledge. Superintendent Jian has been hosting All About Health for 20 years, and he has held his initial aspiration till now. As we mentioned, Superintendent Jian Shouxing has been hosting TV program All About Health for 20 years. He has won a Golden Bell Award for educational program host in 2014. He uses lively pictures and easy-to-understand language to explain difficult medical knowledge to the audience. After 20 years, he still upholds his initial aspiration to benefit the public. Mm -hmm.
な医学史ニーが勉強になりました。All about health has a lot of faithful audience in different parts of the world. When All About Health first started airing in 2001, the former Dai TV director Yao Renlu has invited Dr. Chen Shouxing to produce medical program. I think people can expound Dharma teachings and not the other way around. It's not that All About Health has allowed Superintendent Jin to succeed. It's Superintendent Jin who has made All About Health successful. All About Health has become a well-known and popular TV program. We've designed a wobbly man which you can place on the table. It does not fall even if you push it. It means there's 20 more years to come. Superintendent Jen is a surgeon who has to care for patients, conduct surgeries, holds various meetings, and do other things. He uses his spare time to plan for his program. I use the spare time between things. For example, the time between two meetings, the time between seeing a patient and the next patient. If he did not have the adequate medical knowledge and background, it would be difficult for him to have such a good presentation on TV. For 20 years and more than 7,000 days, Dr. Jen's inspiration comes from his patient. The patient has delayed the needed medical treatment. It affects his entire family. Looking back at the history of All About Health, Dr. Jen also hopes to inspire more doctors to join him on this mission to share medical knowledge. In Johor, Malaysia, the pandemic situation has gotten more serious and the economy has been impacted. City volunteers have started to carry a relief plan. City volunteers in Kota Tinggi in Yulu Tiran have gone to the communities to distribute financial aid and supplies to families in need. We hope the financial aid can lessen your financial burden. City volunteers read consolation letter and deliver their best wishes. They conduct relief distribution, and the aid recipients are very grateful for their help. I'm very grateful for the city's help. Chinese are helping Malays. I have not received other assistance. My husband has fallen ill. I'll use the financial aid to buy food, rice, and medication for my husband. The pandemic situation in Johor has become more serious, impacting the economy. City volunteers in Kota Tinggi and Ulu Tiram have gone to communities to distribute supplies and financial aid for families in need. After carrying out the relief plan for more than a month, they have helped 71 families. I have not had work for three months. I have not paid my rent for two months. I will use the financial aid to pay for my rent. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Currently, we are having a difficult time. I will buy things for my family and not spend it mindlessly. I don't know when the pandemic will end. City volunteers also encourage these aid recipients to help other less fortunate people, creating a cycle of love. In Malaysia, during the pandemic period, the workload of food delivery men has increased. Sometimes they do not even have time to eat lunches. Therefore, a vegetarian restaurant in Kuala Lumpur have used customers' donations to prepare free hamburgers and lunch boxes for food delivery men and people in need. During the pandemic period, the workload of food delivery men has increased. The customers have noticed the food delivery men often do not have time to eat, so they gave me some money, hoping I'll prepare some food for them. This way, during their spare time, they eat the food. Lao Chonggi and her husband have been running the vegetarian restaurant for 13 years. They're willing to give and also have inspired their customers. This is donated by many people. Under the pandemic, we hope everyone can enjoy vegetarian food with joy. Besides comforting the food delivery man, the restaurant owner has also thought for people in need. 
Some members of the public will take two or three lunch boxes home, will let them enjoy different food. This way, when he comes again tomorrow, he will be eating different food. Under the pandemic, people need to help each other. The vendor in the shop has also helped out with providing food. We do our share. Some people really look like they're having difficulties. They'll wander outside and will know they have needs. We hope to provide a little warmth to the people who have been impacted by the pandemic. These vegetarian food vendors are helping people while also promoting vegetarianism. They have also prepared bamboo coin banks for people to make donations, hoping to spread love to more corners. In Malaysia, a teaching graduate decided to promote vegetarian food on the internet during the pandemic. She used her skills in interior design to teach cooking skills. During the pandemic, Zijing graduate Sha Nianyu used social platforms to promote vegetarian food. These are some of the props I used to shoot food. It's a tripod and a reflector, and I bought some books to help me make a table look more like a coffee shop. You can change it and put it on the table to look like this. In fact, aesthetic is something that everyone can accept. Vegetarian food still needs time to be slowly promoted. I just like to share food photos. She is currently engaged in interior design work and publishes food photos to a social media platform developed by China, allowing her to break through national boundaries. In fact, some Chinese people also like Malaysian food, so I post more Malaysian food. Copywriting is also a direct way to bring out key points because people may just start to read. Where are wonton noodles come from and where are its characteristics and what materials are needed? I'll write it all down. Sha Nian Yu liked drawing since she was a child, and her mother encouraged her to apply what she learned and to draw posters for Zijie activities. At the International School Bazaar, we're all selling food. There are many delicacies, so I'll use design to highlight them and make them attractive. The goal is to attract the attention of people. From her conscientious design to sell goods, she has accumulated many achievements with many repeated successes and failures. It's delicious. I ate it all. She cooks very carefully and is quite considerate, especially her father looks forward to her cooking every time. This Jing graduate makes full use of the Internet to improve everyone's cooking skills and allow more people to experience the charm of vegetarian cuisine. In Hualien, Taiwan, an indigenous people's school has held a summer camp for children. One of their activities is to teach children to make containers with betel nut leaves. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.